So today I thought I'd show you a very quick video on a new way I have found to convert your images and photos to line art. But it's new to me at least anyway and I found this is probably one of the best tools online so far to actually do this and like others I've tried this is free but you don't get unlimited access but you do get quite a lot of image conversions with it as a free user. So I'm just going to show you very quickly a couple of examples I have made on my laser. So this is just a quick one I made on plywood just engraved the line art and cut out the shape and added a name to the bottom. Now this tool only did the outline shape, I added the name myself in Inkscape, very simple thing to do, but all we are going to be talking about is the line art side of things today. And then here's another one I done of me, I just uploaded a photo and again I asked it to do the exact same thing and it's converted it into that line art, which when it comes to doing things like laser engraving, this is very useful. So let's get into it, we'll get on the computer and I'll show you exactly how I did this myself. And don't forget to like the video guys, and if you're not already, definitely subscribe. So we are going to be using ChatGPT for this today. You can use it without signing up, but if you want to upload photos, you do need to become a member. Right, so once you're set up on the ChatGPT website, you'll see the page, it'll look pretty much just like this. Once you're signed in, you'll just say, what can I help you with? Ask me anything. Uh, you'll have the sidebar where you'll have all your different chats and everything saved. So you can create new chats from here. And but from here, you can ask it whatever you want, or you can upload a photo and convert it there. So we'll start off then, we'll upload a photo. So we'll click the plus icon and then upload from computer. Just a random photo I've taken from a screen grab of a video. And I'm not going to go straight in and ask it to convert it into a vector line art because the results nine times out of 10 are not going to look that good. To start off with, I'm going to ask it to convert it to something simple, just like a cartoon image. So let's do that first. Let's say, make me into a realistic cartoon. Now doing it this way, you are using some of your image conversions up for the day. But once you get to the result you want, every time you upload another photo, it's going to remember all the prompts you put in, and it's going to use the settings from all of them to apply it to that image. You haven't got to go through the process every single time. So it's taken a look at the image and it's converted a cartoon version of pretty much what it sees in the photo. Now it's not exactly the same, but most of the elements are there. You've got the backwards cap, you can see my microphone on my hat, my blue eyes, my beard, and the hoodie with the Nike logo on it. So it's got all the elements in it, which shows me that, yeah, that is a pretty good representation of me as a cartoon. Now, what I could do from here, I could ask it to simplify this image and make it more like a coloring book style image, but I don't want to do that just yet because that could affect the next steps. What I will ask it to do is remove the color and make into a vector line art. Your grammar doesn't always have to be good either. Nine times out of 10, it'll understand what you mean. What I'm hoping now is it'll take all the color out of the image and I'm just left with the black outlines, which so far it is looking pretty good. Again, if we take a look at that one again, how it's made my beard fully colored in, I am now gonna ask this to simplify this design. Simplify the image and thicken the outline. What I'm hoping here is we'll get something close to what we had before where it is more simple cartoon than you know a detailed hand drawing. Okay, now this is a pretty decent image. We've gone off a little bit from the original image. So we can start again and work from that original image, but I can ask it to make it a little more detailed. But again, every time you're using these prompts, you are using up the allocation of the image conversions each time. They do refresh every few hours, I believe. It'll tell you when you've hit your limit and when they will refresh. But again, as I already mentioned, once we've got this first photo converted to exactly how we want it, every other photo after it is just gonna be one prompt. Just keep going, going and going, and it'll work every time. So that's much closer to something I wanted. So it's taken us, so one, two, three, four iterations to get to where we wanted. We probably could have asked it to make it a little simpler instead of just simplifying it. We may have got to here, but at the moment I'm happy with this. So every time I upload another photo, now whatever I upload a photo of, it's going to set the results based on this, what we've created from all these designs. Now you can keep putting in different prompts to get the exact type of style you want. I'm happy with the result that we got here, so I'll do it again with another photo and we'll see if we get the same type of style applied. I'm just going to take this image off Google and we're going to use this. I'm just going to copy the image. And the great thing is with ChatGPT, you can literally paste. So I'm going to press Control and B, 
and you can paste whatever's on your clipboard into there. So all I'm going to put in here is make me into vector line art. So I should understand that prompt now and know exactly what I want, exactly what type of style I want. There we go. We've got a pretty good representation of that image. Again, if you want it to be more detailed, pop it in the prompt. But this is exactly the type of style I want now. So I'm going to ask it to remove the background. The memory in this chat, GPT chat now, is going to remember this. So every other photo we upload in the future with the background, it'll just automatically remove it. There we go. Spot on. Exactly what I wanted. The background is removed. You might notice sometimes when you ask it to do something like remove the background, it may make some changes, some slight changes. But with these, they're not that noticeable. It's literally just a little bit on the collar. I can see it's added, but it's fine. Even though I have asked it to make it into vector line art, it's not actually a vector yet. If you save it, it'll be saved as a PNG. All you need to do for that is you can just copy the image and paste it into something like Lightburn or Inkscape or Illustrator and just trace it. Let's try one more image, quite detailed. So I've just found an image on Google of a castle. Copy and paste it in and I'll ask it to do exactly the same thing, which was make into vector line art. So we've got the image pasted in, we've got the text pasted in. Let's press go. So far, that's looking pretty good. Let's have a look how it does the bridge and the moat. You know, what? I do really like that. That has come out really well. So unlike other websites I've tried before, this does actually work really well with images other than portraits. And like I said, there's lots of different variations you can do with it. So I hope you enjoyed the video, guys. If you did, definitely give it a thumbs up. And if you're not already subscribed, so you don't miss any more videos like this I upload in the near future. And if you've got any comments or questions, definitely put it down in the comment section, guys. And I will get back to you as soon as I can. Please have fun with it and we'll see you in the next one. Ta-ra-na.